Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And this has been a wet... It's almost the perfect growing environment for many, many things. Uh, Northern Arizona has been blessed, truly blessed, with this gentle rain that's coming down. This is going to be an unbelievable, I mean, absolutely unbelievable wildflower year. I mean, this is the perfect growing environment for that. If you're even remotely contemplating uh, starting a lawn, overseeding, extending the lawn. This is the perfect environment. Uh, this cool nights, bright days, moist, humid. Oh, they will germinate. I mean, within just a couple days and start to be green. That's just, it's, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, unfortunately, um, it's also going to be the perfect growing environment for <laughs> weeds. Uh, that's that's going to happen as soon as we see the temperature rise up to 70 degrees, which probably we're a week out or so. It looks like this system goes through the next few days, and then it will warm up like it does every March. And as soon as you hit 70 degrees, you, you can't hold spring back. It will just, the forsythia are already in full bloom. Uh, the the uh, uh, purple leaf plums, you're seeing this beautiful tree with this pink flowers, kind of a short tree, vase-shaped with this dark, rich, almost a, a, a purpley bark to it almost, a real dark, rich gray to bark to, to purple. That's purple leaf plum or KV plum or thundercloud plum. It's got several names. They've gone into bloom this week. You cannot hold them back. They love this kind of weather. This is when they go, okay. It feels right. I'm going to bloom, and it just takes off. Uh, you're seeing, I, I predict next week you'll see uh, Bradford pears or the ornamental pears. There's a whole series of ornamental trees. It's related to pears, but it doesn't form a fruit. It just has the beautiful white flowers covered the, in the entire tree. There's no foliage, just covered in white flowers. And then, then after it blooms for about a month, then it starts to set some, some leaves. It's got this beautiful glossy green leaf, gets up to maybe, it's like a short shade tree, maybe 30 feet tall, kind of round shaped. And then in the fall, it's the very last tree to turn red in the fall of the year. It's, it's got a, it's the perfect mountain tree. Uh, right now you're seeing that red buds are going into bloom. You're seeing this uh, shorter tree, maybe maybe 12 to, to 15 feet tall. Uh, again, face, kind of an umbrella shape almost. Vase, how do you describe it over the airwaves? Anyway, a short tree with a rounded canopy. There you go. But it's got red to very deep pink flowers on it right now. Uh, when it gets, it'll again, it will bloom for about a month. Then it will start to put on these real pretty heart-shaped leaves. Now, I'm starting to get emails of people calling into the garden center going, Ken, what do I do? Everything's waking up. What do I, it's frost. Oh, it's rainy. It's cold. What do I do? Uh, yeah, I mean, most of these plants don't worry. It doesn't matter. They're used to it. Uh, so if we get a deep freeze, that is if it goes down to mid-20s, actually the magic temperature is 28 degrees, 27, 28. At that point, you start to lose the flowers on some of these trees. Not so much daffodils and tulips. They're up and they're starting to show. You can see they're starting to really, they'll be in bloom shortly. Uh, I wouldn't worry about those things. Things like forsythia and quince and lilacs, I wouldn't worry about those. They're so front-loaded with naturally occurring antifreeze in them. They almost bloom no matter what. Your fruit trees I would be more concerned with, especially folks out in the outer areas, the zone eight folks. You've been in you're in bloom, full bloom. Apricots, nectarines are really they're really starting to show color. Uh, that would be like Mayer, Humboldt. Kirkland, Skull Valley, Kingman, the lower elevations going up towards Pace and the uh, a out 69 corridor towards uh, Cordes Junction. Those areas, you're you're a click sooner. I mean, you just wake up sooner. You've you've been in spring already, so you're you've been there for like 10 days. 
there, if things have been tricked and you start to see a real cold snap really dipping down to that mid-20s, I would maybe cover those things with a sheet. Uh, water things. If if we get a dry spell, then it goes cold real quick. Keeping things moist. This is really good. This moisture has really helped us. A moist plant goes through the cold better than a dry plant. So this 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 event, I think, will help us. This moisture will help us have more fruit, more flowers, without the risk of damage, damaging frost, freezes, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's going to help us. So the main thing you can do right now, the, the best thing you can do, um, fertilize, fertilize, fertilize. Make sure these plants, as they wake up, they've got some nutrients in the soil. If you haven't fertilized since last fall or, I mean, in the last year, your plants are going to be hungry. Oh, my goodness. It takes a lot of energy for these plants to form these flowers to form this new leaf growth, to put out new candle growth on evergreens. If you got a new privacy screen, you want it to fill in, you want privacy like, no, I don't want to wait. Now's your month. The month of March is when you get the best benefit for spring uh, fertilization. So it'll really increase the flower size, more foliage, you know, healthier. And, and might I go just a step farther, you're native. Don't forget your natives. They will need it as well, so that they'll they'll benefit from that. And I'll go into details on kind of what I'm doing so for some of my plants feeding. Kind of at the bottom of the hour is kind of part of that that outline. Right now, you're you are into spring. This week starts spring. Spring the nineteenth. It's spring. Um, you cannot hold back spring. I don't care what elevation you're at. It's coming. Think you're st- you're seeing spring. The first leading edge of fl- uh, uh, plants blooming, leafing, starting to happen right now. And it kind of feels good. It feels really good. Uh, encourage that. Uh, fertilize it. And then you can plant more. If you are thinking about planting a wildflower patch, oh, this is like the time. The, I mean, the, the stars could not align better uh, to, to start a new wildflower patch. It is going to be a blockbuster, beautiful year. There's actually four kinds of, of wildflowers I have here at the garden center. One is we, we create four different, our own mixes. So I've got a, an Arizona mix, one we created years and years ago. It's our, our mountain flowers. Because deer and rabbits are becoming such an issue, we made a deer-resistive list. So if you're next to the forest, we've got that list. We've got butterflies, pollinators, a whole list just for that. And there's one other, oh, strictly poppies. Nothing but poppies, California poppies, not just the orange ones, but all the colors are in this mix. You could put those down right now and they would, you're guaranteed flowers this year. Then I've got two types of wild grasses. So if you've got a new septic field or you just, your contractor just ripped your property a new one and just just scars of construction everywhere, we have a Western native grass mix. It's what you'd see on the side of the road. It's made for revegetation. That would germinate. Really, you want those grasses in. March. The sooner the better. It will benefit uh, you you greatly. You have better germination. Some of that uh, native mix, some of the grasses are too tall. They choke out the wildflowers. They're so aggressive, the wild wheat grasses, that kind of stuff. So we created, called out all the tall grasses, and we have what we call a meadow mix. So it's just a mix of blue gramas and buffalo grass. And then we sprinkled in a few wild flowers in it. So you have this meadowy look. It's not meant to be mowed. It's meant to be admired and looked at with no care. Uh, yet it stays low. I'd say ankle high or lower. That's that's the meadow mix. We've got six, four flowers and two grasses that are four native, you know, high elevation mountain gardens. Whether you're at Cottonwood, Cordis Junction, Sedona, Ash Fork, Seligman, Kingman, Payson, or Prescott. Uh, it's made for us, this elevation. You'll have better success. But this is just an opportune time to be planting. Oh, my gosh. Uh, fruit trees to shade trees to evergreens. This is, you've got the perfect setup for easy digging, easy root growth, fast, I mean, better, longer foliage, longer color coming out those flowers. This is an ideal time. We've got a lot of insightful tips for you with this show. We've got Lisa Watersling coming in with your garden questions right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. 
Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heath, Prescott Pansies, Fanciful Forsythia, and Rosemary Creeper. Rosemary Creeper is a local favorite for rock gardens, ground cover, or spilling over retaining walls. But not all local rosemary is created equal. This one lives where others die. Knowing you can also use it in the kitchen is sheer bliss. Shop the freshest organic herbs in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever. You'll be amazed. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. Lisa Waters Lane's in the studio. Yep. And your question, things you email, Facebook or Twitter back, I think we're very connected digitally. Any kind of social media you use, we're probably on it, connected to it. We post a lot of Instagrams, mm-hmm. a lot of stuff, and you get a lot of feedback with that. And you so do. we share those. And so it's good to hear what your neighbors are asking, what they're struggling with. Mm-hmm. The big one this week has been, what's that thing blooming? What's that thing blooming? What's <laughs> yeah. that thing blooming? I've gotten that a few times, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we should just cover that. The, the tree, it's the trees mainly. Uh-huh. So it's the purple leaf plum. The right. pink one is purple leaf plum. And they're starting mm-hmm. to show some purple foliage. Right. It'll keep that foliage right through the entire year. I mean, the whole tree is just purple. That's mm-hmm. all it knows. The white one is Bradford pear or flowering pear. doesn't put a fruit on it. just has white flowers. Mm-hmm. Nice big shade tree, red in the fall. And the next one coming up, you're seeing a red tree starting, starting to bloom. To show up. The uh, yeah. malice or, or uh, crab apples oh. are starting to. I was thinking red bud. <laughs> I, they aren't quite out. They're more pink. But you're starting. Yeah. I had a couple customers asking, okay. what's the red or purple tree? Uh-huh. Well, it's, that's, that's uh, crab apples. Oh, okay. So they're very bright, very vivid. Uh, the, the announcement of spring are the purple leaf plum and, and the flowering mm-hmm. pears. The right after that are the crab apples. Mm-hmm. I guess it could be a flowering peach, but they're more of a bright red. Yeah, and crab there's apples not as more many of, a, of those. Of a purple, yeah. but we have all those. They're mm-hmm. all they're all going into bloom. They are, and it's time to spring plant spring has sprung. The daffodils are up. Yeah. The crocus are up. Kind of Everything's nice. blooming. Forsythia are blooming. Mm-hmm. Pretty. What do you have? What other questions do we have this week? Okay. Well, speaking of things in bloom, uh, Marsha wants to know her peach tree, of course, is now in full bloom. Yeah. <laughs> She's afraid of it freezing you and losing her fruit. <laughs> yeah. She wants to know at what temperature do you start losing fruit? Yeah. Well, good question. And so all the fruit folks mm-hmm. have the same question. So that's, this is perfect. So thank you, Marsha. Um, 32 degrees, you will lose some fruit fruit Mm -hmm. 32 degrees generally and they've got science on this they've actually measured it of course for agriculture at 32 you lose about 10 percent of your Mm -hmm. fruit at 31 degrees so now we're dipping just into freezing now Mm -hmm. not just frost freezing you'll lose about another 10 percent at 28 degrees not hope. <laughs> all fruit is lost. Okay, not all hope. No, it's just it a is fruit not that tree. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> the fruit tree grower, fruit fruit grower. It is it that is bad. That bad. Yeah. Uh, I would say at twenty eight degrees, if you're hearing in the mountains of Arizona, if the weatherman mm-hmm. says we're going to go into the mid thirties, mm-hmm. you should be worried. You should be covering those trees up. Right. That's put some lights up in your trees because mm-hmm. light, uh, Christmas tree lights, a shop light, something, not LEDs. You want an actual incandescent, you inefficient. <laughs> yeah, you want one just to burn and be as hot as possible. Use a nice inc- incandescent kind of light mm-hmm. bulb. Put that underneath a covering of some sort, frost cover. Mm-hmm. Do not use plastic, right. folks. That holds cold in. Mm-hmm. It doesn't keep the cold out. It holds it in. does more damage. You want to use sheets or breathable mm-hmm. material. Frost material is designed 
four for just this right. for they call it grow cover or frost mm-hmm. cover any of your nurseries will have that we've got great big sheets we've got rolls use that mm-hmm. that's ideal with a, some sort of heat source underneath it and you'll have you'll have fruit right the outer edge might get tinged mm-hmm. uh, but the core of the tree will be will be healthy and fine right. So anyway, that that's how you treat yeah. your 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 fruit. Got to pay attention to the weather, especially people that live in those lower the valleys. Oh, good advice, yeah. Where that cold air just settles down in there, and they're going, "Well, why didn't I get fruit? It didn't get that cold." Well, it got cold that cold where you were. Right, <laughs> so, cold air sinks. Yeah, f- f- goes you know, cold air sinks, mm-hmm. hot air rises. So you folks up on the hillsides, especially on the south side of hills. Right. You're going to be more protected. Yeah, a little fudge factor. The north side of the hill or at the base or the bottom of the hill or by that dry mm-hmm. wash, that gets you can notice it when you're walking in a neighborhood. Right. You can feel the cold air, the dramatic change is just in a street. It's amazing. Just, it's quite <laughs> yeah. a difference. So kind of watch that. 32, right. getting even close to 32, cover. Good, good advice. Okay, next question is from Jack in Prescott. He... Uh, Wants to get an early start on um, treating his aspens. Last year, he had black spot and some other yeah. stuff in him. So he wants to get an early start on it this year. He wants to know what to treat it with and when to start. Sure. You start as the leaves just break. So it's a little bit early, although it's mm-hmm. getting close. I guess it depends on your elevation. You Where folks you down towards mm-hmm. you know, Sedona, Cottonwood, Camp Verde, Jerome, those areas, you're probably there. Folks up in Flag, Williams, you folks, you're probably not quite there. Prescott, Prescott Valley, Kingman, okay, Payson, we're, we're almost there. Mm-hmm. As the leaf just opens, that's when that bacteria gets into the leaf and it starts to eat in the new growth. It loves mm-hmm. the taste of new growth. Right. Little bacteria that gets on it. The birds. Transport and the, it. Yeah, the birds are the, are the main culprits. They'll light on one and then fly to the next one, light on that one. It just spreads from their feet or, or insects can do this. They spread it that way. Uh, what do you spray it with? I would say just as the leaf emerges, you could spray it with a fungicide. Mm-hmm. That's what you want. There's a couple. I would use personally Infuse, I-N-F-U-S-E, Infuse, but copper sulfate. It, the reason there's a difference, Infuse is the strongest you can get over the counter, mm-hmm. but it's not synthet- it's, it's all synthetic. It's man-made. Not organic. Yeah, it's not organic. <laughs> For you organic gardeners, if you really want to go organic, you could use copper sulfate. Mm-hmm. It's the counter to that. It's not quite as strong, not quite as good in, in my opinion, mm-hmm. but it, 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 it could, do the, could do the trick. Sure. Let's say f- feed your aspens with a 744 all-purpose plant food and then put your infused or copper sulfate, one of those two, onto that. Is that just a one-time treatment or do they need to treat throughout the season? should be one time. Okay. It mainly enters the, the system of the tree in the early spring just as it opens. That's okay. the that's the most critical time. Mm-hmm. We'll monitor it. I'm not big into selling folks tons of chemicals, go spray everywhere every right. month. Okay. I would say monitor it. And as if you see it start to show up, mm-hmm. we could spray spring. it again with that so all the new growth will come out. So. so say they have an aspen that really hasn't had an issue, but being that it's in the air and the birds transport it, do you, are you do you think you should pre-treat if you haven't had the issue? Is it yeah. good preventative? Um, I mean, it can't hurt. It can only help. Uh, if you're really worried, yeah, go ahead. But I, for my own trees, if I, I'm not going to go spray for aphids just because they might be there's some aphids in the neighborhood. I'm going to wait until mm-hmm. I see them and then go after them. If you haven't had the problem, I wouldn't worry about it. If you've had the issue, it mm-hmm. will come back. It's in the leaf litter. Down below, the birds are fluttering around looking for Mm -hmm. worms. They fly up in the top of the tree, and there you got it back at you again. So there you do need to treat. So I would say food and water is the most important thing. I'd rather see you put a good fertilizer and water your trees Mm -hmm. more efficiently than than go treat them for something you don't have yet. Okay. Well, that leads us to our next question from Shannon. She wants to know if she should start increasing her watering yet or is it too early still? We should share the story with our the uh, public works came to our house this week. Yes. Uh, the gophers had eaten holes, two hole, two lines. They'd eaten a hole through the, the mm-hmm. drip irrigation line. And I turned my clocks on. I'm watering midday, but I turned it on. I was going to water the trees and shrubs mm-hmm. for a couple hours. Well, the water <laughs> ran full on. I don't know how many gallons we wasted just I running out there know. in the yard. It ran through our yard 
you know, through the neighbor's yard and out onto the street and public works are going. Thank you guys. That's great. I'm glad yes, you let us I'm know. I'm glad someone let us know. That, uh, we're wasting all this water all because the gophers will treat that. Mm-hmm. It's easy to, 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 to fix, fix it. once you know it's yeah. there. So that's, you know, I should you run should it. go out and check your lines. Yeah. Don't just turn the system on. Yes, it's time to turn it on. <laughs> I think you should water some. And when you see things in bloom, that's your cue. Right. Uh, you're, you're, everything's in bloom right now. Mm-hmm. As, right after, as they start putting more foliage, they really start using more moisture. Mm-hmm. So you stood. I don't think you have to go to your regular summer water pattern. Yeah. I might once a week, more than enough, more than enough mm-hmm. in the middle of the day. Okay. Uh, as we get into April, then it's, you really need to be more exact. Mm-hmm. Now everything is leafed out. Everything is growing. Now it's more critical as we get further into spring. Right. At first, you turn the clock on, test it first. This is it's Ken Lane, <laughs> School of Hard Knocks. Okay, I should know better. I yeah, do know I'm better. I'm going to hard knock you in about two seconds. I was just in a when hurry. When I get that water bill, you better run and hide. That's all I can anyway, say. You need more. If you want exact how to water stuff, come see us. We've got some water guides. Glad to help you. You've tuned into Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heat, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Prescott Pansy. Prescott Pansy's giant three-inch flowers thrive in extreme March gardens. Large velvety blooms dazzle with radiant colors of blue, violet, yellow, and variations of stripes that look like smiling faces and love being planted in March. Shop the brightest spring flowers in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. The place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. For myself, this is what I did for my own personal gardens. I would mentioned I'd, I'd do a segment just on fertilizing the better better color, better health of all landscapes. Uh, I took a bag of each of two, th- well, three things. What did I do? There's, I got four bags I brought home. I got a bag of all-purpose plant food, a bag of fruit and vegetable food. It's an organic plant food. I brought a bag of sulfur home, and I brought some weed preventer down. And they've all been spread. I did it right before this storm kind of hit. I'm trying to take advantage of the rain, the moisture, because March is our second wettest month of the year. Uh, summer, the summer summer monsoons, we have more moisture, but we have this late winter, early spring pattern that happens to us. It's unique to the mountains that you can take advantage of. It makes it easier to plant. Just it's just an opportune time to really get started on your on your gardens, your your landscapes out there, especially you poor folks that bought that new track home. Yeah, they gave you a boulder, some rock, two shrubs, and a tree in the front yard, but you're barren in the backyard, and you're just surrounded by rock. And like these sterile, just block walls. Oh, it just feels like I'm enclosed in a prison. You can really turn that into a benefit, this private garden, this secret feeling where I just, the world goes away and this is my paradise. Watch a sunset, watch hummingbirds coming around. It can really be a paradise that you can enjoy. Really, most folks in Arizona, really throughout the the elevation, but really here locally, they turn that into almost an outdoor living space or living room. So the grills, outdoor kitchens, patio furniture, shrubs, feeders, just this beautiful garden that you just really do want to sip coffee in the morning, sip a glass of tea or wine as the sunset goes down. It can really be a paradise like no other part of the country. Other parts of the country, the the season is, is, is short, 
Here we get such a long growing time to enjoy that fire pit outdoors or the hot tub, or we just really enjoy the outdoors more than other parts of the country, uh, other than maybe Hawaii. And that's, that's cheating. That, that doesn't count, but definitely better than Minnesota or Alaska or Wyoming or New York or any other place. We have this unique, beautiful, dry climate that's just bright and sunny. And in fact, I, is anyone else tired of, of the clouds? I mean, I'm ready for them to go. I want sunshine. Let's bring it on. I want to go for a hike and take the side-by-side out and go for mountain biking and just do the things that we love to do in the mountains of Arizona. That's what we're famous for. Um, feed everything. So I fertilized the evergreens, especially my natives, with the all-purpose plant food. It's a 744 organic mix, something I made personally here for mountain folks. But the evergreens really respond to that. Uh, your lilacs, uh, roses really respond to that. The main ingredients, cottonseed uh, a meal, cottonseed meal is, is a very acidic, rich source of, of phosphorus and, and nitrogen. But then I also put some iron and some sulfur in that mix. And so now you've got something that greens things up and makes them grow. What we're finding, though, is we're having this real, the edible thing is, is bigger than ever. So growing your own fruit trees. Every time a lettuce comes across the border with, you know, scare of poison stuff, you know, they, got, they, they use this overhead recycled water on many of these vegetables. And so you can get E. coli and stuff happens with your jalapenos and tomatoes and lettuce and spinach, that kind of stuff. So there's this trend that People are growing their own, and you can do it so easily. I tell you, who I'm really seeing interest in the younger folks, families, the millennials, and, and uh, late Xers. They are really into gardening and growing their own, sustainable, organic, non GMO, all these messages they've been collecting, and they're buying their first house and they are coming in. We're seeing whole families come in and buying veggies, herbs. Uh, gro- growing their own. So they want organic. And so we made this organic fertilizer, purely organic, made, made with bone meal and meat meal, just different meals. Uh, we made it, it's a 6447 blend. We, it's again, our recipe. I made it myself. Uh, it's 644 nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, which is standard stuff. But then it's got 7% calcium. We have a calcium deficiency in our in our soils. Or it's the alkalinity, the heavy clays. So it creates this root rot, or not root rot, uh, uh, blossom rot on tomatoes and peppers and eggplants and squash. Certain plants are really sensitive. So if you've got a, where that blossom was setting, if it starts to have this black spot, that's blossom end rot. It's almost always a calcium deficiency. So I created a vegetable and fruit tree food that is made to to get rid of that for you. So to make your gardens more successful. And it works. It really works. And it's pelletized. You can spread it around like you sling it in your hand spreader and it's fine. Uh, It really, really works. And it's completely 100% organic. For me, I, in my yards, I also put down, I get a big bag of sulfur, soil sulfur. The pH creeps up too high in your gardens in the mountains. Our water is very alkaline, so you're always trying to combat that. So I just, while I'm spreading things, I throw sulfur in around everything in the yard uh, right now. And so that's, and it will correct some of that. So I have more fragrance, better color, better flavor out of my, my plants. And lastly, the weeds will go crazy. So I put my weed and grass preventers on the fence lines, down the driveways, down the rock lawn, where I don't want weeds in between the roses. This is your time to prevent weeds before they come up. So those are my four things, all-purpose food, and a, a fruit and berry food, soil sulfur, and then a weed preventer. And that's what Ken Lane, we're just neighbors, friends, talking over the back fence. This works for me. I think it'll work for you too. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heaths, Rosemary Creeper, Prescott Pansies, and Fanciful Forsythia. Fanciful Forsythia is a gorgeous spring shrub that explodes with masses of solar yellow flowers, followed by shiny green leaves. Every home should have one for sheer beauty, fall color, and gentle natural care. 
Shop the brightest spring bloomers in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. I was raised in a nice house with my family. Now I'm out on my own and have my own apartment. I love my cute little place, but there's something I do miss. I miss my mom's garden in the backyard. It was so special because over the years I was growing up, I watched her give those flowers and plants such a personal, loving touch and so much color. I miss it so. Well, guess what? I just visited my local garden center and they gave me some great ideas. And now, because of them, when I look out my patio window, I see the beautiful planter they suggested, teeming with flowers, bright Arizona flowers. Looking at those flowers gives me such a nice feeling, and it's almost like being with mom in the backyard all over again. Want help with planting? It's all online at plant-something.org. Brought to you by the Arizona Nursery Association at plant-something.org. You'll love it, too. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And back in the studio. Welcome, babe. Thank you. I like hanging out in small spaces with you. <laughs> Not too small. <laughs> Not not airplane tubes. One of us wouldn't come out. <laughs> but hotel rooms and uh, beach fronts and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, yachts. Those aren't small. Uh, well, okay, those are <laughs> those can be larger. And gardens, how about that? Gardens, that's good. So we, I prefer that over a yacht. I don't like boats in the oh, ocean. I've been talking. To, I've been trying to talk. Not that we have the money for a no. yacht. Maybe a used beater. We could do. <laughs> A rowboat. So we just park it. And don't. As long as we never have to start the motor, we're okay. <laughs> don't quite. Garden center owners don't quite. No, they're not in that league yet. We're not. Maybe someday. Someday we get those kids through college. Ah, twins through college is the hard part. Man, they suck money. They do. Actually, children just suck money. We've launched yeah. two out, yes. and you notice the water bills just drop. It like the it's food, in half. I was just looking water. at food, especially boys or boyfriends. <laughs> uh, we just they just suck money like it's a c- continual feeding frenzy with them. It's crazy. So now we're launching. We got one kind of left at home, mm-hmm. kind of, mm-hmm. and uh, the bills are just plummeting. Yes. Maybe we could save some more. Well, into the college <laughs> five twenty nine plans <laughs> four more years. Yeah. So uh, this segment's about. Garden inspiration. Just what are some things you can do right now, seasonally, Mm -hmm. that would make a difference, that would beautify, that would uh, just uplift or be good for the gardener within or be good for the garden soils or just make it look better, smell better, feel better. (laughs) And Lisa's got the magic touch. We we give a segment to her to inspire us and help us to to garden smarter. Mm -hmm. So spring is am- is among us. It is. So the willows are starting to leave, and the KV plums have shot their pretty pink blossoms yeah. out. So everybody's kind of getting the bug. But then we also got snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have been planting. You know, the KV plums have been right. out there growing all along. They're, yeah, they're they fine. Not, they're right. they're okay with that. Sure. That's why they that's why they bloom now. Mm-hmm. So I thought we'd talk about some of flowers and pretty things that we can put in right now that they aren't going to care if we get another snowstorm oh, good. or it gets a little cold at night. Everybody's kind of getting the urge to do something. Well, there's definitely some plants you can put in now and they're going to be fine. So I you don't need to worry about it. part of the urge is, is not just, we've also been cleaning up. So all of mm-hmm. our, our backyard's been all pruned back. The grasses are cut back to the ground. Yeah. Tree trims. I mean, everything's been cleaned up. Old plants are pulled mm-hmm. out of the ground and it's just empty right. there's just lots of gaps mm-hmm. so the perennials are been mowed back it just it looks bare yeah. it's just lots of soil and so sure. there's this gardener within goes i need something just right. give me something to look at or smell that's or touch true. or play with and that's like at the pots by our front door we kind of cleaned out some that just yeah. we're looking rough so um, i found some really pretty things to put back into those pots and one of the things we have that we've got back in this year is the cool wave pansy we couldn't get them last fall. They hadn't grown them when they weren't available. But now we have them. And the Cool Wave Pansy, people go, eh, a pansy. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Cool Waves take the cold better, and they also take the heat better. So they're going to bloom longer into that summer season for you. 
Um, they also get a little bit bigger. So they get a little bit taller and they also get a little bit wider. They kind of have a mounding or a spreading characteristic to them. So they're going to do when terrific. you add out by the, the front patio uh, on, on a, in a big pot, in mm-hmm. the front edge, you put a cool wave pansy. Isn't that the one that actually flowed over? It was halfway right. down the pot before it got done filling. So mm-hmm. it had almost a flowing or waving effect right. than, than other, let's say, a, a jumbo or viola or some right. of your standard pansies. Mm-hmm. Very pretty. Oh, it's gorgeous. And they come in uh, white and they also come in yellow. Mm-hmm. Um, I so, like red. Well, they don't have that one available uh, yet. Purple? Give them a year like, or two. Yeah, that's true. Well, if year. you want purple... I'm t- I found these and I snagged a few of them because they were gorgeous. It's called Celestial Northern Lights Viola. Oh, pretty. And it is striking. Oh, my goodness. I'm thinking that with a white cool wave white next to oh, it yeah. would be really gorgeous. But it's a dark, dark purple, but it has a yellow center to it. Oh, neat. And it's the, it's the perennial Viola. Mm-hmm. So it's going to keep coming back um, and bloom pretty much through the season for you. So it's... That was beautiful. You got you got to look at that one. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Now those both those you can plant now. Sure. And if we got snow or it was They'd blizzard conditions on Monday and Tuesday, mm-hmm. it's okay with that. They oh, don't sure. have to cover them. They just kind of go and go and go. They would be okay. Yeah. Okay. The other snapdragons are terrific to put in right now. True. Yeah. We have a beautiful one that's a. Um, it's not a deep purple. It's almost a light violet purple. Does that make sense? Lavender. No, it's not lavender. No, I'm a man like I would even know what <laughs> lavender is. It's called Montego, <laughs> a- right? Montego purple. Um, it gets about ten to twelve inches tall, but it's a very unique color for a snapdragon. Everybody's used to seeing kind of the pinks and the yellows, but to see a true purple in that is is unusual. Yeah. So very very pretty. And that's nice. We should plant one of those. That that sounds because we have all the reds and the we do. orangey and all that stuff, but a purple. Uh-huh. It'd be really quite nice. Oh, it'd be beautiful. So, okay, I'll go bring some. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, they're sitting, <laughs> they're cleaned up, ready to go. Fill up the trash can twice with just uh, I know. plant tailings. Yes. Candy Tuft is starting to bloom right now. Candy Tuft is a white um, perennial, so it just puts on this mass of white blossoms on it. Really beautiful springtime perennial. Nice one to throw into your pots or into your perennial beds to get some nice yeah. early color. Yeah, candy tough is so hardy here, and it's so consistent. It reseeds, does really mm-hmm. well. That would really look good. That new load, uh, you just had it come in. That yellow flower, leopard's bane. Oh, yeah. So that was the could, next one I was going to oh, talk hey, about. I mean, yellows and whites are so classy and so <laughs> it springy. Is. Put it Thanks. in a blue pot. Ooh, it'd be oh, really pretty. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. That's why Lisa's got this segment. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. So leopard's bane is a, gets about two foot tall. Beautiful, but it flowers that are about two inches across. Mm-hmm. Bright, bright yellow. Screams spring. I'm here. Got a weird name. Leopard's, Leopard's bane. bane. <laughs> what is a bane anyway? It's not like well, the garden's bane or the. You know, I looked it up because I was like, yeah. why do they call it leopard's bane? I guess that genus of flower, for the longest time, they thought it killed any animal that ate it. So it was a oh, bane. Really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. But turns out it's not true. Oh, so Havelina really cool. would eat it. <laughs> So we should put one outside the gate and see if see if they see have if it it. <laughs> Put it in the front yard. We I'll do that. Bring one okay. home. Put it in the front yard. Let's see if the javelina. That's a good idea. That float by if they'll eat it. Right. So that'd be good mm-hmm. if that's the case. If they don't, we have another thing to add to our javelina resistant list. list. Right. Yeah. Good. Right. Linton roses looking really terrific right now. Another. It's not a true rose. It's a perennial, mm-hmm. uh, but they bloom right now, and they're also evergreen. It's true. So a really cool one to put into your pots or your perennial beds there again. That's more of a shade plant, right? Hellebores and Linton rose, all that whole family of plants. Hellebores. And actually leopard's bane is more of a shade Shade. plant too. Hookara. Or what's the other name for the common name? Coral Coral bells. bells. Yeah. We got some really pretty ones of those in right now. I've had one in a pot by the front door that I threw some pansies in. Yeah. It looked terrific all winter long. Looks better than the pansies do. <laughs> and they're, they're really pretty. And, and they'll bloom later. Right. So we have the um, marmalade right now, which is kind of a, has an orangey leaf to it. Mm-hmm. Very unusual. And then we have one that's called blackberry ice. 
It's got to be black. It's black. Yeah, it's dark. kind of a really dark purple. There again, it would look terrific with uh, the leopard's bane, that yeah. yellow, uh, the candy tuff that's white, or the lobularia, which is another white. Um, lobularia kind of looks like alyssum. Yeah. But boy, does it hold up so much better than Alyssum does. That's true. We had some in our front pots, and I, you clipped it back. Are we going to see I if it comes back? I just clipped it because it had new growth coming from the base. It actually mm-hmm. thought it was a perennial. And right. it's in the pot. I know. And in the front yard, it clipped it back, and it's starting to regrow. So It'd I'm be not interesting to it. see what it does. Yeah. But that was a beautiful – talk about something to drape over the edge of your pots. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Lobularia. I wish that one had a better common <laughs> name, too, like you're lobbing snowballs. But it gets 18, 20 inches across, right. put it at the front of the pots, and it mm-hmm. bloomed from in spring when we planted it. Mm-hmm. It was in bloom at the end of the year. Craziest long bloom right. cycle of any annual mm-hmm. flower out there. And then – Looks like it's going to come back. I mean, cool. You can't beat that for an annual flower. No. Now, white pansies, have any of those? White pansies? I have yeah. the cool wave pansy. They're white, That's too. white. Okay, uh-huh. good. So there you go. Lots of stuff you can put in the ground now. And storm or no storm, cold or no cold. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. You heard it here from <laughs> Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Presca Pansies, Mountain Heath, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Oklahoma Redbud. Oklahoma Redbud grows to just 16 feet tall. This local native is super easy to grow. Vibrant red flowers cloak the branches of early spring. Luscious heart-shaped leaves emerge with a soft pink tinge that matures to a vibrant green. Shop the brightest blooming trees in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Hi, Ken with the Plants of the Week and our Quaking Aspen. Few experiences capture the magic of nature so well as Quaking Aspen dancing on an autumn breeze. You'll love their unique bark as it shines white with autumn leaves and shades of zestful yellow. Plant a row along your driveway or simply as a focal point in the yard. Water's hand-picked specimens start at under $70, but we have huge showy models as well. Water's Garden Center, where people who love quaking aspen love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. So Water's 59th Spring Open House is next weekend, not this week, next weekend. So this is a big deal for us. 59 years, 1962, March. Water's Garden Center began, the very first garden center to open in the mountains of Arizona. There were some other garden centers down in Phoenix area, but nowhere else. And so in 62, Harold Waters, my father-in-law, started Waters Garden Center. So we celebrate this. It's a big deal. And to get a garden center ready uh, from a winter, a four-season garden center, we're talking there's there's only evergreens, uh, November through February, and spruce and pines and firs and junipers and all the evergreen stuff, the leafy things like euonymus and silverberries and red tip potinius. These that's what we've been we've had. But now we are stocking up the entire garden center, getting ready for this spring open house. It forces us to get new new displays, get to, to get painted right, to get the get the flow of cash registers right and make sure the in caps, the signage is all ready. It's, it's a big deal for us. It's not like you just go throw a few plants on the ground and you're good to go. Half of it forces us to get the, the infrastructure, the polish, the lipstick, the, the beauty of the place ready. And then we have to fill it up with plants. That's the hard part. You go from a quarter acre of, of plants, evergreens, to two acres. You're, you're bulking up by eightfold or more is just that's a lot of work it's a lot of plants and so this week we've been bulking up getting a lot of plants and some new things came in that we didn't have before and it's a lot of the edible stuff and so no one does edible plants very well in northern arizona phoenix they've got some but really it's citrus it's very early early uh, winter bloomers the the peaches that grow down there They'll grow up here, but they won't produce fruit 
up here because they just bloom way too early. Uh, pecans, yeah, they sort of kind of maybe grow here, but really we're just out of the reach of pecans. They grow better down in the deserts. Okay, you folks in Kirkland, Skull Valley, you know, Hillside, yeah, they grow down there, but that's actually more like desert than it is up here in the higher elevations. So there's a few places. Almonds do really well. Walnuts, they grow naturally. Walnut Creek, Walnut Grove. There's lots of walnuts in northern Arizona. They do well. And so those are the two main nuts. Carpathian walnuts, that's the soft-shelled. That's the one you really want to plant if you want to harvest nuts. Uh, almonds just are so easy to grow in the mountains of Arizona. They, they're, more, they're cold hardy. Right now, we just got in some berries. So the blueberries, they will actually grow up here in the mountains of Arizona. They're fully budded. They're not in flower yet, but they're just starting. And so they're very cold hardy. So they grow, blueberries grow Minnesota, the mid Midwest, cold, cold areas. Although they'll take the cold here too. What you need to watch for with, with blueberries they like acid kind of soil. More acidic, the better. Uh, we have very alkaline soil. And so it's just the opposite. And so what will happen is when the uh, pH creeps up too high or it gets more and more alkaline, uh, you'll want to bring that pH down and make it more acidic. The indication on a blueberry will be uh, it, the plant will turn yellow. The leaves will go off. They should be this rich, dark, blue, green kind of foliage to it. The, um, if, it, if the pH gets too high, it'll go to yellow. The, the fruits will start to shrivel, be lighter colored. Um, so it's easy to read on how the plants are doing if you just watch it. I grow my blueberries in containers where I can control the soil. So if I can have a heavy peat moss mixed soil, I find that my blueberries just do ex exceedingly better. They just are, they like that. So peat moss is extremely acidic. And so it helps a blueberry thrive. And our water's potting soil, the potting soil we, we make, we've got our own recipe for potting soil. The main ingredient is peat moss. And so I just put it in a pot, fill it with water's potting soil, and they thrive. Blackberries and raspberries, boysenberries, grapes, they're less finicky. They don't care. They'll go right in the ground and just thrive. They like heavy clay. They like that crushed granite kind of stuff so so many gardens have so they just do really well what what your berry plants like they like a richer soil so there if you're planting berries let's say blackberries probably one of the number one producers uh, for local mountain gardens they just do really big juicy berries my mouth's just watering thinking about them. Oh, they're so delicious. Go out and pick a whole bowl full just for breakfast. It's amazing. Have to take the grandkids out and hands and face will be just black by the time we get done gorging on these organic blackberries. They grow really well. What they really like, though, is a richer soil. So when you're planting those, get a nice robust cane, get a nice plant, fully rooted, and then get a bag of potting, not potting, of, of mulch. Mulch is... is or composted mulch, add that to the soil. Put a top layer, put a two, two, three inch layer on top of where the roots are, and that plant will take off and thrive. And so that's, that's, there's different planting techniques. And that's one where you do your homework or you check. That's where Google is not your friend. They give you so much advice that's from all over the planet. You don't know what you're looking at. It's so confusing. That's where it's better to talk to a neighbor that's obviously successful going, hey, how'd you do that? And they love sharing that, coming to a garden center. Your local garden centers, because this is our profession, we go through life with a radar. We're like a cyborg going back and forth, like a just looking for different kinds of plants and where they grow and how they grow and what's where do they thrive. And so we can tell you, oh, yeah, blackberries aren't going to like full shade. They like more sun. That's where the best producers are. That's what we've seen over and over and over again. So ask for that advice. Ask for that expertise. They're willing to share it. Gardeners, there's something social about it that they just, we just like talking to other gardeners. There's something about it. Of course, the number one producers, well, I guess, well, number one, I guess, let me get rid of, before I go to number one, figs, pomegranates. This is a good state for both of those. 
both both pomegranates and figs like sun. They like heat. They want at least six hours of sun or more all day sun. Can you go 24-7 sun? They would love that. What you want to do there, though, is there's a, so many types of figs. There's quite a number of pomegranates. You want the coldest, hardy variety. You, it's all about the winter cold. And so up here at, at elevations, the figs don't grow into trees. They get burned back to the ground like a perennial, and then they come back fresh from the roots. So they're more like bushes than, let's say, down in Tucson where they grow up into huge trees. Not so here. So they'd be more bushy. So it'd be like head-high bushes, and they produce a lot of figs. They do really well. Pomegranates, there's some varieties that grow that are hardier, that will take the cold better. You want those varieties. There's two that we sell here for this central highlands uh, area of Arizona. And so we're drawing customers in from Kingman. Hey, Kingman, good, good to hear you all. Good to have you all tuned in. Uh, Williams, we, they come down. Ash Forks, Ligman, they come down this way. Sedona, Camp Verde, Cottonwood. Hey, folks, I know you all come over from uh, to visit Costco and Trader Joe's. And then you hit the garden center. We, we realize what's going on, but we love talking to garden friends. It's okay. And of course, this Quad Cities, you know, Prescott Valley, Chino Valley, Dewey, Humboldt, Mayor, Prescott, of course, it's our hometown. So, and, and, and all that hillside over to Kirkland Hillside. I mean, you all to get to town. You've got to come. You come right by the store. So we're used to seeing that. So we're selling varieties that perform well in this central highlands. Uh, it's part of the state. Apples and pears, number one, number two, as far as production, heavy production, consistent. Then it would be, I'd say peaches and cherries. They do really, really well up here. I mean, just produce, you're, you're going to have so much, you won't know what to do with all the fruit. It's such a heavy producer. Then it'd be nectarines, plums, apricots. What else? I'm sure there's some others. Oh, we have some uh, persimmons in. There's a cold, hardy variety of persimmons. All of those do well. We do not grow, as far as edibles go. Citrus. It's just too cold up here. I mean, citrus does. It'll go down to 20 degrees, and then they're dead. Uh, we go colder than that every time. Uh, s same with uh, uh, avocados. They don't grow up here. But your apples, peaches, cherries, apricots, nectarines, pears, they do really well. All right, we'll be right back after this. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to the Mountain Gardener. Waters Garden companion plants of March are Prescott Pansies, Mountain Heath, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Oklahoma Redbud. Oklahoma Redbud grows to just 16 feet tall. This local native is super easy to grow. Vibrant red flowers cloak the branches of early spring. Luscious heart-shaped leaves emerge with a soft pink tinge that matures to a vibrant green. Shop the brightest blooming trees in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. If you are doing some homework, because you're researching, it's midnight and you're researching gardening, that's kind of what gardeners do. We kind of like to read up and take a look. Seed catalogs are like sexy, like, oh, this is, oh, look how exciting this is. Quite honestly, when new trucks, we've unloaded three or four truckloads of plants here just this week. It's sort of like that. It's like Christmas. You open up those back trailer doors, you see the plants, the, the latest harvest. You're going, oh, this is neat. Oh, look at this. I've never seen this color. Oh, that's exciting. And so the great thing is we get to snag some new plant because, you know, we want first dibs. Half the staff here, they don't need to work. They work here because they like people. It's a social outlet, and they get first dibs. 
So that's kind of, they're all over it. And so that also provides for our customers. If we've used all these plants, we're gardeners. You come to talk about plants in the gardens. We've probably already planted these or it's on our radar where we're looking around going, oh, there it is in the neighborhood. I see that. Oh, that's how it grows. So we can impart that or share that with you. So you're making less mistakes. That's our goal. You're going to make mistakes in, in gardening. The goal is not to go backwards. You're, as long as you're making mistakes in the right direction, you're good. And so you can correct and go back and forth. So right now it's fertilize everything in the yard. If you want to research plants, we've taken some of that advice. So we get together as a crew, as our horticulturalist. These are certified people with very high degrees or accolades or industry praise. You may not see that because we've got a blue apron on. I mean, aprons, I, I don't know. They keep you clean. Garden gloves, they're probably worn out because they got whole, we've been handling plants so much that they've got holes in them, but they know stuff. They, they, they live and breathe and watch how plants are growing. Take advantage of that. We package that. We built a website. It tells you how a deodor cedar grows, the height for here, how it acts here. When does it bloom here? How much sun does it, how much mountain sun does it take? Not low altitude sun. And we put this together in a website. And so when plants come in, so the peonies just showed up. You can go to our website and you can see the different varieties. What's the color? Now the picture, we're probably taking the picture. We take some pictures ourselves, but we'll probably import some pictures. But you can do the research on how it grows for here through the website. So you just go to watersgardencenter.com and there's a great big shop button. We've set up a separate shopping cart or where we can list the inventory that's here at the garden center right now. It's pretty accurate. Get you the price, get you the size, mainly it's the descriptions. How does it grow here? How much sun does it take here? Because it is different. So the Japanese maples, we're starting to get some of those. We go no more than to go six hours or minus, under six hours for a Japanese maple in the mountains of Arizona. It's more intense. This is harder for you Californians because you're used to full sun right out there in the landscape. That's where it's more humid at low elevation. It, it, here, they'll burn on you. So I know the national tag says that. When you do your main Google search, it says that. But we're creating information for us here in the mountains of Arizona at that mile high or even above, 4,000 foot level and above. So that's Sedona, Camp Verde. I'd say Cordes Junction, Spring Valley, Kirkland, Skull Valley, and all the way up to the high country of Flagstaff, Williams, you know, Prescott, of course, in those areas. It's good information for here, us, the mountains of Arizona. Take advantage of it. Waters Garden Center, Dot com. Throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center, and we love talking to fans of the show. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heath, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Prescott Pansy. Prescott Pansy's giant three-inch flowers thrive in extreme March gardens. Large velvety blooms dazzle with radiant colors of blue, violet, yellow, and variations of stripes that look like smiling faces and love being planted in March. Shop the brightest spring flowers in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.